Great. That's cool, eh? Everyone okay with me preaching on my togs? <laughs> Tough. <laughs> um, I'm not going to be long. I just got a short um, message this morning. Um, but uh, before I do that, I just want to uh, just take a moment just to pray over our giving. So let's do that. Lord, we just thank you, God, for your, for your generosity, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you are so good to us. Lord, you bless us, Lord, beyond our imagination. And Lord, we just, Lord, as a church, Lord, we want to represent your generous nature, Lord, in our community. Lord, we pray, Lord, that we would be known as the church that is outrageously generous. And Lord, so this morning, we just pray over our giving. Lord, we pray that you would bless it, Lord, that you would extend it, Lord, that you would put the super on our natural Lord, that our giving this morning would be supernatural. Lord, we just thank you, God, for what you are doing in us. We thank you for what you're doing through us. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that, that what we give today, Lord, goes to blessing our community, changing lives, and Lord, seeing you made famous in this city. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Great. Well, just... A, a couple of quick notices. Um, Carol's in the Park, which was cancelled last night. Um, is, is the weather looking all right out there at the moment? Sunny. Sunny? So uh, Carol's in the Park will be on. So that's at 2 p.m. Uh, so if you were wondering, we've decided to cancel our prayer gathering tonight, um, which is normally at 6.30, uh, just because it'll be on at the same time. So... Um, so go and enjoy Carols in the Park. And for those that are helping, uh, some people were helping. I was talking to Matt this morning. He said, you won't be giving out glow sticks now. So there's no point. <laughs> but anyway, there's still lots to do. So yeah, cool. Um, now, uh, Ellie is in Lower Hut um, this morning preaching. So uh, missing her, but... Uh, it's all good, um, and this will be just about our last time doing that, because next year, um, the Lower Hutt Church is actually um, relaunching as a 5 p.m. service, so, so Ellie and I will always be together, which is, um, is going to be really cool, so we're looking forward to that next year, and uh, we won't be in different places, so, is that cool? Um, all right. And I just wanted to have a little celebration about something. At the beginning of, of this year, um, well, I was reminded recently that I said that I didn't think this should be a year that we would strive about finances. And as a church, and as uh, some of you will know, we're, we're up for a new roof on this building. And um, that's quite an expensive undertaking. And there's lots of other things that we're wanting to do with the car park and all that sort of stuff. And... Um, and at the beginning of the year, we, we, well, I certainly felt and others felt this was not going to be a year of striving, that God would provide the finances for the roof. And, um, and he has. So we have been marvelously gifted some buildings in Lower Hutt. And uh, those buildings we will be selling on, and that will be more than enough to do our roof. Isn't that brilliant? So God is good, and so I just wanted to celebrate that with us. Now, the thing is, when we get given stuff like that, the trap is that we can go, oh, that's great, I don't have to you know, contribute anymore because God's providing it all, but no, God responds to our generosity. God partners with our generosity, and I think, well, for me anyway, this is encouraging me to actually say, I, I want to be even more generous because I can never outgive God. And this is a, like a, to stir me up, saying, actually, I want to be more generous because God, God is so good that, he, that there's even more in store. So, so it's exciting, but I want to encourage you to stir up the gift of generosity uh, in you because, because God always responds to our generosity. Eh? It's an opportunity to partner with His economy, and His co economy is always good. 
So I'm just excited. So next year we will, we will be looking to get our roof redone and we will also be looking to move into the big auditorium and we'll be renovating that. So that's going to be super exciting. So I look forward to next year. I also really feel that next year that we actually need to have the baptism pool set up uh, permanently with it warm every week. Because I believe that we should be having baptisms every week, eh? I, I believe that people should be getting saved on Tuesday and baptized on Sunday. Who, who agrees with me? Yeah? I, I totally think that's how it should be, that people should be getting saved in our homes because our lives are representing the nature and character of God and people are looking at our lives saying, what is it that you are carrying? What is it in you? And we can say, it's Jesus in us. You know, and the response to that is that they would want to follow him. So anyway, this morning I wanted to um, just talk about peace. And, um, and the passage I've got this morning is Isaiah uh, 9. And uh, as we lead up to Christmas, this is a prophecy, a, a, a declaration of, of who is to come. And in Isaiah 9 verse 6, it says this, For to us a child shall be born, to us a son shall be given, and the government should be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. There shall be no end to the increase of his government and of peace. He shall rule on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from that time forward and forevermore. And this is one of my favorite bits. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. God is zealous. He is a zealous God and he is zealous for these things. He is zealous that we would know him as the wonderful counselor, that we would know him as the almighty God, the everlasting father and the prince of peace. Now, long ago, a man sought the perfect picture of peace and not finding one that satisfied, he announced a contest to produce this masterpiece. The challenge stirred the imagination of artists everywhere, and paintings arrived from far and wide. Finally, the great day of revelation arrived. The judges uncovered one peaceful scene after another, while the viewers clapped and cheered. The tensions grew. Only two pictures remained, remained veiled. As the judge pulled the cover from one, a hush fell over the crowd. A mirror-smooth lake reflected lacy green birches under the soft blush of the evening sky. Along the grassy shore, a flock of sheep grazed undisturbed. Surely, this was the winner. The man with the vision uncovered the second painting himself, and the crowd gasped in surprise. Could this be peace? A tumultuous waterfall cascaded down a rocky precipice. The crowd could almost feel its cold, penetrating spray. Stormy gray clouds threatened to explode with lightning, wind, and rain. In the midst of the thundering noise and bitter chill, a spindly tree clung to the rocks at the edge of the falls. One, on, one of its branches reached out in front of the torrential waters as if foolishly seeking to experience its full power. A little bird had built a nest in the elbow of that branch, content and undisturbed in her stormy surroundings. She rested on her eggs. With her eyes closed and her wings ready to cover her little ones, she was, she was manifesting peace that transcends all earthly turmoil. That is the picture of peace. You know, peace is, is not a thing. Peace is a person, and his name is Jesus. See, peace has nothing to do with our external realities, but everything to do with the in, internal reality of Jesus Christ. Peace exists not in the absence of chaos and confusion, but in the presence of Jesus. See, the gospel was described as the gospel of peace. Peace is a spiritual weapon. Peace has a violent reaction in the spiritual realm against the work of the enemy. When, when we can rest, when there's turmoil around us, that violently opposes what the enemy is trying to do. See, I love the meaning of the word peace. In the Bible, the word peace is shalom. And that word means this, the authority to break the spirit of chaos and confusion. That is what peace is, the authority to break the spirit of chaos and confusion. I love that. That stirs me up. I don't know about you, but it stirs me up. See, the peace of God is totally unnatural. 
It's actually supernatural. Peace is not about the external circumstances, but the internal reality of Jesus. You see, if we, if we only found peace through our external circumstances, then we would have to constantly try to control the things around us to maintain peace. And who knows that, that most of the things that are, happen in life are actually out of our control. And, and so we, we fight with, with the external things that are out of our control, and it causes chaos and it causes confusion in our lives. See, when we try to create peace, we enter into the impossible task because peace has nothing to do with external circumstances, but everything to do with who is in you. See, we may not be able to control the circumstances of life, but we can control his unnatural, supernatural peace when we allow it to reign in our lives. Do we allow him to do that or do we say, no, God, actually I can, I can handle this one on, on my own. I can sort this one out. I'll try and fix this and I'll try and fix that. Or do we actually just rest and allow his peace to reign in our lives? Now, over the last few weeks, um, Ali and I have had a pretty crazy uh, time, a pretty crazy couple of weeks. We we decided that it was, would be a good time to sell our house. And, um, and so we did that. We put it on the market. But first we found a house that we liked. So we found this house and it was great. It had everything that we wanted. Um, because we, we had built a house recently, but it was always just planned to be an investment. We, it has no grass and we have four, nearly five kids. Um, and so there's no grass for them to play. So it was always an investment. So we found a home with a bit of grass and nice backyard. And, um, and then we put our house in the market. And we ended up losing the house. And then we still had our house for sale. And what happened is that our house went, uh, it, it, we got an offer on our place. So it was, it was being sold. And up until last Sunday morning, we still did not have a place. We we're moving out on Wednesday. And it was getting a little bit, a little bit tight and a little bit crazy. In the midst of all that, you know, Ali and I were, were, you know, she's preaching in Lower Heart, I'm preaching here. We were doing the opposite, and you know, just all of this stuff is going on. And then we discovered on our house, I took the pictures off the wall as we started to pack, and discovered that all the paint has faded right through the living room, kitchen, lounge, and I'm going, oh my goodness. And unfortunately, the, the suppliers of the paint just didn't really care, unfortunately. So we have been busy repainting the whole house. It has been absolute chaos at home over the last couple of weeks. But that does not mean that there is no peace. Because peace has nothing to do with the external circumstances in our life. To top it off, last night, during the week, Ellie had, had some time to go and pray and just spend time with God as she prepared for Sunday. Um, and while she was out, she said, oh, I couldn't get my message on my iPad. And I said, that's all good. I'll sort it for you later in the week. Last night, we sat down at about 9.30 and she said, oh, can you get my message? I just need to read over it. Um, open the iPad. It's gone. Completely gone. Like, it's totally gone. <laughs> couldn't recover it. The kids must have deleted it. We don't know. It's totally gone. And... and you know, what, how do we respond to that? Hey, you know, like after all this, she's, she's just about to get ready to go preach this morning. And, and in the midst of that, she's also had morning sickness as well. So, But you know what? God is still good. Still peace can reign, eh? We don't need to stress. We don't need to worry because God is good. And this morning she's fine. She's down there and she's preaching and she's feeling good about it. Listen to this. In John 14, Jesus says this, I have told you these things while I am still with you, but the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, and the standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name in my place to represent me and act on my behalf, he will teach you all things. And he will help you remember everything that I have told you, Peace I leave with you. My perfect peace I give to you. Not as the world gives you do I give you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect 
peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. This is the promise that Jesus has given us. No matter what you're going through, no matter what's going on in your world, peace can reign because of Jesus. You know, Duke University did a study, and uh, maybe the worship team can, uh, can come back and we'll probably just finish with, um, with Relentless, eh? Cool. So Duke University did a study, and uh, they did it on the peace of mind. And the factors found, uh, they were looking for the factors found to contribute greatly to emotional and mental stability. And these are the things that they found. Number one, the absence of suspicion and resentment. Nursing a grudge was a major factor in unhappiness. Number two, not living in the past. An unwholesome preoccupation with old mistakes and fa- failures leads to depression. Number three, not wasting time and energy fighting conditions you cannot change. Cooperate with life instead of trying to run away from it. Number four, force yourself to always stay involved with the living world. Resist the temptation to withdraw and become reclusive during periods of emotional stress. Number five, refuse to indulge in self-pity when life hands you a raw deal. Accept the fact that nobody gets through life without some sorrow and misfortune. Number six, cultivate the old-fashioned virtues of love, humor, compassion, and loyalty. Number seven, do not expect too much of yourselves when there is too wide a gap between self-expectation and your ability to meet the goals you have set. Feelings of inadequacy are inevitable. Number eight, find something bigger than yourself to believe in. Self-centered, egotistical people score lowest in any test for measuring happiness. (laughs) There you go. Duke University made this study and discovered that the Bible is true. They have literally discovered that the Bible is true, that everything that Jesus is points to peace, that we can try and fix things in our world, but they have literally discovered, they had no idea, what, obviously, what the Bible was about, but all of these things, for me anyway, they point to Jesus. See, not living in the past, what's just happened? Because of Jesus, our ability to not live in the past happened. Our old man dies, our old nature is dead, and we come up a new creation. I love that. Find something bigger than yourself to believe in. Find something bigger than yourself to believe in. You know, I believe that the Hutt Valley could be totally changed by the love and hope of Jesus. I believe that, and I live for it got to find something bigger than ourselves. You know what? All of the stuff that has been going on for Ali and I in this last week, I'll tell you what, something else that happened just recently. Uh, we were down south, and, and I went to pick Ali. No, Ali was picking me up from the airport, and I, I, I get out of the plane, and my kids, my uh, Savannah and Israel, were there to meet me, and I'm like, what are you guys doing in the airport all by yourself? And where's, where's mum? And they're like, oh, mum's sick. And... So I go running out to the, to the car, and Ali's in the car, and she, I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this. <laughs> anyway, she'll be fine. Uh, she, yeah, she had um, this book and had made a bowl out of it and had, was throwing up into this bowl of, yeah, it was just horrible. And, and I, I get to the van, she's crying, she goes, oh, I'm not fairly well. And I like, had to go put it in the rubbish bin and... And then she threw up like four times on the way home and all night long and we had to get up in the morning to get on the ferry. And it was just like, man, all this stuff, eh? But do you know what? It never changes what we believe in. Every day we wake up saying the Hutt Valley is going to be changed by the love and hope of Jesus. We, and, and, you know, when you have a big dream, when you have big vision, you're willing to make the sacrifice for a day. And there's never a time where we question that. 
all the stuff that goes on around us never changes why we are here. It never changes what we believe about the goodness of God and how great He is. It never changes that we believe that He is the God of peace. It never changes what's happening on the inside of us. And so I want to encourage you, church, as we head into the Christmas season where where it should be the, the best time of peace, no matter what's going on in your world. You know, lots of us have family coming. It's an opportunity to reflect and demonstrate the gospel of peace to them, to show them that, that Jesus is the king of peace. He is the prince of peace. Why don't you stand with me this morning? And I just want to pray, pray over us. And if you're here this morning and, and, you know, maybe you're just feeling like life has been a little bit chaotic. There's been a bit of confusion and there's just lots going on. I just want to speak to that. I want to speak to it this morning. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Lord, we thank you for your nature. Lord, that you are a good God. We thank you that you sent your son, Jesus. Lord, not only to die for us, but to die as us. And because you died as us, we are able to be raised to life with you. Lord, we thank you for what's taken place this morning for Phil and for Mal. Lord, we thank you that they have been raised to life this morning with you. Now, Lord, we thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. Hundreds of years before you even walked on this earth, it was declared that you would be the Prince of Peace. And Lord, we thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, we pray, Lord, for every person here this morning, Lord. Lord, I don't know necessarily about what's going on in their world, but you do, God. Lord, you know what's going on, Lord. And as they open their hearts to you this morning, Lord, I want to speak peace. Lord, I want to speak shalom into their lives. Lord, I want to speak the authority of Jesus, the authority to break the spirit of chaos and confusion over their lives, Lord. And I want to speak the peace that transcends all understanding into their lives. Lord, we declare that you are good. Lord, that you are good all the time, Lord. Lord, and that our external circumstances don't dictate who you are in us and who you are through us. And Lord, this morning, we come together to declare your goodness. Lord, and we come together as a family, as a church. Lord, to demonstrate your peace, to demonstrate your goodness to this community. And Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you, Lord, as we look forward to 2017, Lord, and what you're going to do through this church, through your people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Great. Well, let's finish with a song this morning. Let's finish just declaring that His love is relentless. And uh, if... If it's your first time here this morning, please come and get a coffee. I'd love to meet you. I might just shoot and get changed out of my togs first and then join you all for a coffee. Great. Bless you, church.